Okay, so for this week of awareness meditation training, we're exploring, uh, call it a few different things, awareness training and embodied spontaneity, um, training in spontaneity and integration of awareness. Uh, but for me, essentially moving beyond formal practice, especially formal still practice. So how do we bridge the gap between that formal practice and just our everyday life walking around? Often that feels like a pretty, it's just striking. It's like here I practice and then now I'm not practicing, right? So today I wanna to offer up some different practical ways that we can start to bridge that to integrate formal practice in our daily life, our experience of resting uh, in awareness, okay? How do we make that just be natural? spontaneous part of our lived experience. And there's a lot of ways to do that, but I think um, it's really helpful to break this down into smaller steps and chunks. So that way we can really work with our experience versus just like it's either or, you know, or all in or nothing, you know? So it's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm practicing formally or I'm just out and about in my daily life, okay? So just to remind you where we're at in this training, we're in the third phase. Phase one was pointing out awareness just so we can recognize it, get a glimpse, um, and then the second part was where we were working with seemingly ob uh, obstacles, right? Uh, body, motions, um, effort. And um, now we're, we're trying to really have confidence in this integration embodiment that this is who we are, okay? Um, that really um, it's not dependent on a particular formal practice. Okay, so I want to get into just right into some practical tips. So we're not going to talk a lot of, about this kind of in abstract terms or um, with a lot of different teachings. It's just like, let's get to it. We've, we've done a lot of practice already in this training. So I think we can just jump into it. Um, so I'm going to give some tips here in this talk that you can try right now as we're, we're doing this. Um, and then afterwards, I'm going to guide us in more formal practices um, from Judith Blackstone, and she has a lot of really wonderful practices to do just this um, uh, for this uh, embodiment uh, beyond sitting still. Okay, so um, in particular, again, I'm gonna highlight this. If we're accustomed to being seated, not moving, our eyes closed, our senses closed, the goal is to move, that's, that's fine. We've already talked in, in awareness uh, training, that that's not a problem. What what causes us a problem, hiccups, is that we think that we that that's what we have to do, or that's the only way we can experience awareness. That's where it becomes a problem. So, so we're going to go beyond just being seated, of not moving, and eyes closed. We've already actually done eyes open in this training. We've already opened the senses. You know, we practice with the senses open and available. Okay, but we're just going to extend all of this um, even more today. And what this amounts to for me is a more full inclusion of our whole being in the experience of awareness, our whole being, our whole life. So now some tips. First, we can start with the eyes. So first thing is just open the eyes, right? So if we practice with our eyes closed, at some point, let's, let's experiment with opening the eyes, okay? Um, with all of this, you know, it's, I, you know, I always give the recommendation, follow, and pay attention to your experience, where you're at with, you know, your body, your life, what's going on. Um, but again, so long as we're, we're at least moving towards including all of who we are in our experience, that's what's important here. So we have our eyes open sometimes, you know, so let's practice with eyes open. Okay. Um, then we have the option of, so static moving, uh, static looking. So if I open my eyes, I can just look straight forward and practice that way, just resting on awareness, eyes open and forward, eyes open and down, eyes open and up. And what is that like? What is it like to look up while resting? You can also do to the left and to the right. So again, statically, you know, and all of this is like really slow. So you might just do a whole practice session, eyes open and forward or five minutes like that. And then five minutes down I think with all these things that we're going to talk about here, for me, it's slowing down, um, luxuriating, if you will, in just that way of being. 
because otherwise it's so easy to miss. It goes by so quickly, the eyes moving around and doing things, looking at stuff, getting involved. So if we can slow down, and if I've never practiced looking straight forward, let myself, let, let's do that, you know? What is it like to be in that position? Then we can move the eyes. So what is it like to rest in awareness, to attune to awareness while moving the eyes? So I can move them up and down. What's that like? Okay, side to side. And then of course you can do circles if that feels comfortable. I think I would start getting nauseous <laughs> doing any circles with my eyes personally. Um, but you know, uh, you can experiment with that a little bit. What is that like? So here we're taking tiny little steps from that eyes closed way of practicing. Now we can work with the head. Okay, same thing positioning our head up. Now, some of us, you might have already done that with the eyes moving up, but we can tilt our head up and look. And again, whatever works for your body, you know what I mean? Like we might have problems with our neck, just whatever is comfortable, but including whatever range we have, looking down, what is it like? And over to the left. And over to the right. And again, you can do this by the smaller steps here is to allow your head to be in that position for a little bit as, as long as it's comfortable. Then you can do moving. So, you know, slowly moving up and down. So that's the practice. Like I'm showing you all this quickly, but you know, like my intention here is I want to move and see what it's like. And then of course you can just do spontaneous as well, which that's my favorite, you know, just practice and just move in the head looking around, right? Just checking things out, resting in awareness. Now with other senses, you can do the same principle with all of our senses, but it, it's a little, it's much more subtle the the instruction. So for example, with the ears for, for me, when we practiced uh, non-dual perception from the realization process, we experienced hearing just happening, seeing just happening, letting go of effort. It's a wide open awareness, sounds arise and pass, but we're not really, we're just there, right? We're just being, we're not getting involved in any, anything that's arising. Um, but here we could direct, we could allow ourselves to direct our attention. So if I have the window open, if I hear a bird outside, I could let my attention really go to that bird, you know, that sound. And so I'm engaged, but it's still attuned to this open, spacious quality of awareness. Both of those can happen at the same time. So that's how you can do that um, with the other senses. We're actually going to do that with um, uh, touching as well. Like, what is it like to touch an object with awareness while tuning to awareness? Okay. Now, um, Another thing we can do is try to dissolve the boundary between our what we consider our formal practice, starting and ending it. Can we make that more fluid? You know, where where there's it doesn't even feel like there's a start and end to the formal practice. So I recorded a couple guided meditations for this very purpose, and um, to be honest, I, I think I first clued in on that from Hokai Sobel. When he guided a meditation one time, he basically he just kind of naturally did a few of these things. And I had noticed at that moment that, like, wow, I normally just plop down and start meditating, right? And there was more of a more of a transition, and that stuck with me over the years. And so um I I just created one example of this of a of a an intentional way to start practice and in practice that's more fluid. And um, so what happens here is we have a less abrupt experience, less abrupt start and stop to practice, which makes it feel not other. It's not like something we do over here and that's different than our, than our daily spontaneous lived experience. So I'm going to share with you the, the, I have the recordings on SoundCloud, but I'm going to share with you really quickly in this talk, the, the general steps. And I think you could do a lot of things here. This is not like, these are the steps. These are just some ways that you can do this. Okay. So first is arriving, allowing yourself to settle into your seat. So if I'm sitting sitting down, I don't just go poof right to practice. I'm like, I can let myself move. Like here's the a chair. How does it feel? You know, 
yeah, let the body settle. This is different than like, I also have the experience sometimes of feeling antsy, restless, you know, and then that's a different experience. Like, oh, I just can't get settled, in which case it's like more of a process of letting go, you know, just letting myself be for a minute. But if our tendency is to kind of go into a rigid position, just check in, let, it, let yourself find your seat a little bit longer. Um, also taking in your surroundings. So sit down, look around and you know, I'm in this, this room every single day, but I do practice in here every single day, seated and moving around. And it's a lot of times things are fresh. I see some object in the room and it looks different to me today. We're not really analyzing or getting involved in anything, but just feel, have the experience that you are here. I am right here in this particular room in this particular seat with this particular air temperature, these particular smells. Okay. So this softens the, the beginning of the practice, take in the environment. Now, uh, another step you can take is grounding. So feel the contact you're making with whatever you're seated upon, or if you're standing, you know, somehow we're making some contact. Okay. Um, you know, I don't think we're quite yet at, at floating practice uh, that I'm aware of. If you can do that, great. <laughs> but we're usually making contact, okay? And so just notice it. So right now, my feet are making contact with the floor. All right, uh, my arms are resting on armrest in this chair. Okay, I got a little memory foam cushion for my butt. <laughs> so I feel that. I feel the back of the off of my, my chair here. Really pay attention to all the contact points. It's not, you're not, again, analyzing or getting over involved. You're just like, here I am. Here's the contact I'm making. Here's the, here's what's supporting me being here. Okay. Um, then if, if you're familiar and you all are familiar, but anybody watching this, you know, familiar with uh, Judith Blackstone's practice of realization process, uh, inhabit the body. That's another step. So, you know, inhabiting the body, experiencing that we are the internal space of the body. That's another step we can take. Also just noticing the breath is a good way of doing that, of making internal contact with ourselves. So just paying attention to how we're breathing in that moment. That's another good step of beginning our practice. And then allowing ourselves again to settle, okay? So if we notice we're starting to get rigid and you know, trying to force ourselves into a posture, um, See if we need to settle. See if the body wants to align itself naturally, okay? And let it do that. And then you can just sit for a moment. Just sit without doing anything. And then you can begin your formal practice. And whatever practice you have in mind for that day, it could be another practice. Like maybe you're gonna do some meta practice. You can do just what we did there as a way to arrive, okay? Really simple steps. They seem overly simple perhaps, it's easy to, easy to overlook, but I invite you to try slowing down when you start practice and see what that's like. And then especially if I were going to pick one start or, or the end, I would do this at the end. So when you finish practice, it's kind of the, the same thing. End with just sitting. This is a nice option. You let go of all the technique. This is really, really common, you know, in practices like Sogjin, even if we're going to do some practice with, with form and different techniques to just let it all go and just sit as you are. And then pay attention to your breathing. You can inhabit your body at that point as well. Start to move, okay, right where you're at. So don't just get up or don't just head out the door, you know, feel, feel that you're here, feel the contact you're making with whatever you're seated upon or standing on. Take in your environment. So if, especially if you were practicing with your eyes closed, look around again. So whatever experiences you, you've had in the, in the formal practice, especially if you felt that they were supportive or uh, lovely, you know, that's gonna carry in more into off the cushion. Um, and uh, then, you know, uh, after taking an environment, you can get up and if you wanna continue that integration, so if we're seated, you know, we can get up, stand, do the same kind of thing, take an environment, move around a little bit, and then we go, go about our day. So 
everything we've just, I've just shared with you all seems really, really simple, but for me, they're actually really profound. It's like the, one of the deepest ways to, uh, to integrate this, uh, experience of awareness. It really is. If, if I can maintain it, it, that experience while moving around, awesome. Then I can do that when I'm out and about much more easily when I'm at the grocery store or, or out on a walk, it'll just be much more natural. It won't be quite a big of a leap from just seated, not moving. So um, obviously also, you know, classically in Buddhism, we have walking meditation. So that's usually the go-to, right? So any form of walking, uh, one really simple way is to pick two points and walk back and forth between them or pick a, a, a circular path. So that way you don't have to kind of think about where you're going. You can kind of go on autopilot, which what lets you kind of sink in, drop in a little bit more to this experience of resting and awareness while walking. But then of course you can obviously make that into um, wandering around, right? Walking through the forest without any particular intention of where you're going and, and having that experience. Um, moving the arms, we're gonna do a little bit of that today. So I can be seated here and I can start moving my arms while attuning to awareness. What's that like? Okay. So that's another way to integrate movement. And I already mentioned touching of an object. That's another way. Okay. So basically, you know, uh, we're finding incremental ways to have the same experiences we do on the cushion off the cushion. And that's by introducing small incremental slow movements with the body, wherever we have movement um, and off the cushion and including our environment. 